Hello, friends and uncles. Uh, I'm having a wonderful time. This is just uh, sensational, I have to say. Um, it was great to see Scratch. Wow, I mean, all, all the, that, that cartoon they showed, for instance, right? Was that great? I mean, they cut it off because they didn't have time. I, I think it was because of gore and violence. <laughs> I don't know where that was headed. But I mean, it was so riveting and gritty was the thing. <clears throat> Loved it. So, um, gosh, I'm supposed to talk about happy hat. <laughs> After six hours yesterday, okay. Um, the thing is, is I'm not going to talk about Hackney Hack the whole time because I really don't think Hackney Hack is the answer. I mean, it's, it's a fun program and everything, and I'm really enjoying working on it. And I'll show you a few compelling things. But I'm actually more interested in the general, um, I don't know, where, where, what's going on with teaching and art and hacking, and why is there such a dearth? <coughs> Let me get one other thing started here. Um, my name is Why the Lucky Stiff. I know uh, there's. I, I know that um, some people want to call me Mr. Y, or my um, my name tag was under filed under L. <laughs> <laughs> and, I mean, the thing is, is it's 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 just a middle name. <laughs> okay, there's no first or, or last. It's just one one middle name. <laughs> that's that's just the nature of it. So I don't, I don't know exactly why I was invited here today. I'm not associated with anything of repute. <laughs> I'm not like uh, uh, associated with a company or a business or anything like that. When I work on Hackney Hack, I go into my closet and I have a stenographic notepad and I usually fall asleep. I mean, there's like nothing going on. So I don't exactly know why I've been invited here today, perhaps because I carry the appellation of a freelance professor. And that has caused some confusion because I'm not any way a professor. And I, if you've taken offense to this, I agree with you completely. There shouldn't be other people calling themselves remotely professors if they don't have any accolades of any kind or, or any uh, degrees or, or merits. But I just want to assure you that I'm trying to rid the world of people like me, <laughs> I don't know exactly, I don't know, we'll make a breakthrough at some point. So a freelance professor is not, I mean, it's more, it's less like a professor and more like sort of a scarecrow. <laughs> Somewhere between a scarecrow and a seeing eye dog. Like in that range, you'll find, it's, it, the professor's way over here, the coordinate system is all, I mean, the work, so basically what you're looking at is a wooden man who's running in front of the blind, scaring away all the pigeons <laughs> out of his path to clear it away. It serves a purpose, but rarely. <laughs> okay, so um, one thing I want to talk about is that I only teach by fated appointment. <laughs> You've probably not heard of this before because you know of no other freelance professor. But I don't teach any classes or anything like that. How I, how I initially got into this is I was riding the train one day. This, I mean, this is, I know everything else I say is a lie, but this is true. <laughs> so I was riding the train one day and it was a late evening train, empty, kids were running up and down and climbing all over the place, climbing all over the seats, um, talking to me, I mean, so they, they were jumping around me and I was hacking away and they were like, what are you doing? And I said, I'm hacking, please, please, please stop. And they said, well, what are you making? What are, what's going on in there? And they saw the code and everything and, and they were really intrigued by it. And I showed them the little program that I was working on. Here, I'll move this over here so we can. This is a newer version of Hackity Hack. Um, when, I, when I was doing this at the time, I was doing it in JavaScript, just on an HTML page. <laughs> Originally, what, was, what this was is um, 
just two guys sword fighting, an ASCII sword fight. So that, um, and I just had the two guys, and I had one guy saying something, and they were like, oh, let's change it so that the other guy has a different insult. And so I changed the insult, and they saw where it was in the code, and they just started coming up with these insults. And one of the kids was really into it. He's a little, a, little, a little blonde kid named Thomas, about 13, and uh, he just totally, totally took to it, and I can see why. Because the dueling swordsmen, who, uh, their insults are at, at random, chosen from a large list, this is the ultimate computer program. <laughs> this is the zenith of what we've achieved so far. I feel fortunate to have been the one to discover it, but I assure you I will do nothing ever again of work. <laughs> So, when I say by fated appointment only, I say that I only teach kids who I just happen to encounter, who for whatever reason, it just happens. I can't explain it. And I like it that way. I don't need a license. I don't need to like do anything. We just mess around with the computer and uh, I've taught about 12 different kids that way in short periods of time, maybe uh, two weeks, a couple days a week. And it's just informed me as to how tough it can be to learn to program. But also, um, that a big part of it is just coming up with <coughs> examples that are engaging. And like, there's so much you can do, really. So we'll, we'll talk about Hackity Hack here for just a second. <coughs> Actually, before I get to this, let me show you something very briefly. Oh, whoops, hang on. Apologies, I think my volume is muted here. Uh, this is a young man who does a, a tech TV show on YouTube. This video aired uh, three weeks ago or so. Here we go. Young man's name is Patrick. It says, Want to hack like in movies? Code yourself a blog in six lines. Okay, I wanted to tell you that I am going to take that off the website. It doesn't matter how many lines something is, but you do want it to be short, sort of, right? Okay, he's going to talk about his. Treaty? If he's good at. Or you're all on my end and you got twice that. So 12 lines and you have your instant messenger. Just seven lessons, totally conversational. Let's say 13 and up. So this, a teenager can do it. And uh, me being a teenager, it's apparently very easy. Um, I found with experience with other programming languages, it's very incredibly simple. Um, I have, where's, where's my notes? <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> Actually, let's go back to the beginning for just a second. I myself a bit of a programmer developer. Um, I'm beginning just learning a few programming languages, kind of getting a feel of it. I learned some C. It's a good strong language. C++, I'm just beginning to learn. I mean, uh, I also know some web languages like HTML and CSS and stuff. But it's kind of, it could be daunting for... Okay, so one thing I want you to notice <laughs> is that he highlights C and C++ as programming languages. HTML and CSS is kind of thought offhand as maybe related web languages. He doesn't really group them in the same group. I thought that was interesting. I don't know, maybe I'm reading too much into that. Uh, uh, first time users. Okay, so here, he's, users. here he's talking to OSX users about how the app doesn't work on the I think we're working on OSX and Linux support. 
So it's only available for Windows, but if you're running Windows on a virtual machine or on boot camp or whatever, uh, you can run this. It's a free program. Okay, this is a smart kid. <clears throat> virtual machines, right? I mean, that's a... <laughs> This is a smart kid, so listen to, some of the, listen to some of the things that he's going to say next. He's going to talk a little bit about readable, readable code and readable uh, programming. Programming are going to be incredibly simple. Basically, all the, all the code here is pretty much you could read and kind of understand. Now, if you have no experience in computers, it would be pretty hard. But if, you've had, if you have any experience with any, with any programming language, this is very simple. Because you can pretty much decipher it with just just reading it. It's not like <laughs> it's, I want to read you a C program. <laughs> Include stdio.h is your first line in any C program. Int main print f is a scan f or turn z. Because <laughs> unless you know a certain programming language like that, and you know what each command does, it's hard to decipher. Nobody that does that, nobody, only somebody that knows a programming language could decipher it and could try to figure out what the program's about. With this, if you have some computer knowledge and you can read, <laughs> it's also very easy to code. With this, you have to memorize how each program looks. It has to include the beginning statement. It has to include this. It has to follow these rules. It has to have this in the end. It has to end in a certain way. If you can do this, you can do this, but you have to do this, and then you can do that. If you can't do this, then you can do this, but you can't do that, then you have to include this. Um, you just you have to know everything for a program like that. It's, it's very simple. It's Hard. Simple. The review is far too glowing. I'm sorry. He's, he's spiraling out of control. <laughs> One other thing I just want to show you is this sign off. And my younger brother could do it. And he's like 11. It's simple. Hackyhack.net. My website is techtodaylive.webs.com. You can join the web chat and watch my live stream, at, usually at Saturdays at 4 p.m. Excuse me, Tom. I get to... The web chat, the live stream, it's all, I mean, wow. <laughs> I mean, this is just one kid, but how is this kid not programming? It's ridiculous. So um, we did some great classes yesterday. I am very happy that the young Jennings are here today. Doug here wrote a program during class that I want to share with you. So one thing that's great about Hackity Hack is that it has a mail system built in so you can send programs to each other. And it just works straight inside the interface. So I'll go here to my inbox. And here's the uh, message from Doug. His Mario song. Here it is right here. Um, we had moved on to other things, and we were well into other topics in the lesson, Doug. <laughs> <laughs> he decided to keep going with his song that he was working on. He was working on a rendition of, of the Mario theme song, and because, you know, understandably, he plays piano, and like, it, he was having a good time. And nothing could be more encouraging than that. Ah! Let's see. Actually, yeah. itself 
isn't really about, about um, I, I, I haven't spent a whole lot, a lot of time on the complexities of it, so it's actually quite crashy and quite, um, quite bad. <laughs> from an expert's point of view. Um, what I'm trying to spend a lot more time on is just the stuff that nobody ever thinks about. Just, I don't know, maybe cook up some ideas for the rest of you. And some of those things are not having to save files to the file system, so you have um, a program list built into the, built into Hackity Hackity's little um, help terminal, which as you type in, it takes you through lessons and responds to you as you type in different bits of code. This has been pretty effective on the web. I also worked on a site called Try Ruby. If you Google for it, um, it's run like 50 million lines of Ruby code over the last three years. And um, it, it, it just, it, it, it's the same sort of thing where you enter code and it kind of coaches you along. There are eight lessons built in. They're about uh, they're, they're just a few minutes each, so I think total, the eight lessons take 20 minutes. And the allure is that you can just spend a short period of time, not have to crack open a book. Our books are so horrible, okay? I just, I, I have a tirade inside me that I could give about our tech literature. Everything is so astonishingly, astonishingly thick. Attempt to search on Amazon for anything that's a beginner's text of Oh, let's say the 80 page range. I think that's probably an ideal range, don't you think? 80 pages? How much can you teach in 80 pages? And yet, why is it that everything insists on being a reference material full of e-commerce sites and full of, uh, I, I mean, windowing applications? And, I mean, who, how is this like the predominant thing that we're faced with? I, I don't know. I, I, so I see an alternative, and that is these sorts of interactive lessons. We're just used to it. We're, this is just what we've done for so long. And programming took off as a career, so it is, and it's such a good way to make money that that has a hold on on, on the entire uh, or on our entire culture. So the idea behind an interactive lesson is is that you're not faced with what page do I skip to, where do I go to. Um, you've got five pages of, you know in every tech book you're facing like ten pages of installation right up front. This is no installation. You walk up, you've got three paragraphs. You can decide to skip to paragraph two or three and just run the line if you want, but the choices are far less that, I mean, you are kind of being guided down a path, but it, it, at least it's a, an option right? on the other side of the extreme. Uh, other concepts that are cheat. Yeah, there's a cheat sheet. Another concept that we use is, now, as opposed to Scratch, which is all visual, I do text-based languages just because it's what I'm accustomed to, and perhaps people you know, learn better using straight text and typing. Um, I don't know, it's just a different approach. And so I use some <coughs> completion. When you're going to create a new sound for a game, you'll type sound and then hit tab when the little icon appears, and then you're faced with a little sound creator. This sound fully named after Foley artists in the movie. In movies, I don't know if you're familiar with these guys, but they're the kind of guys when they want to make a punching sound, they take a stalk of celery and a pillow, and then they bring a sledgehammer down on the tube, and it makes the perfect punching sound for, for whatever reason. <laughs> and so this is sort of an area where you hit a button, that's look, you're looking for a jump sound, you can get some random ones, if you need to go in here and edit a little bit closer, you can change the different uh, settings in here, you save it, and the code is there placed in the system. The idea being that you're, you can still go up here and edit all the code, but it gives you a head start at least, and, and um, if, you, if you need to create it from scratch, rather than hitting tab, you can just hit the space bar and continue your program. So it's not, hopefully, not that intrusive. That's all I'm going to say about Hackity Hack for now. Let me... So, one, one of the other things that I want, wanted to address is there's a, an essay I wrote 
six years ago called The Little Coder's Predicament. And it was just some thoughts that I had at the time. I didn't know really what I, what I was, that this was, was going to be a continual topic for me at the time. But I got a lot. It's in your programs. OK, it's in the programs. And I want to read you a few responses just to give you an idea of, I get responses like these all the time to show some of, the, um, some of what we're up against. So here's a fellow, Yuri uh, Hu Chan. This was a response the day I wrote the email. Your basic premise is flawed. My youngest sister started coding in JavaScript last year at age 13 all on her own. All you need is a basic text editor and a browser, which are ubiquitous, and you can email programs around if you don't want to just put them up on GeoCities. That's actually a really good point. I mean, it is great that browsers have JavaScript in them. Um, a similar response from this year. The basic of today is HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Three languages. Three languages are the basic of today. <laughs> you have to learn three languages, and it, it's not—it's hidden in a browser. How are you going to run the code exactly? And y you've got to think about IE, Firefox, and all that stuff. <laughs> I mean, that's demented. <laughs> Is this your Hello World program? You've got to write some HTML and throw some JavaScript in there. You could do it from. How would you do it straight from JavaScript? I mean, you've got to do some HTML. And the hard thing about it is, where does HTML end and JavaScript begin? Have you ever struggled to figure out that context switch? And then you've got, some people have even suggested on top of that, PHP. <laughs> the point that they're getting across is everything is great, court is adjourned, um, we're, we're closed for recess, uh, the Case is closed. You're just not thinking hard enough. You're not looking hard enough. There are things out there. We're living in the future. I mean, it's just everything is fine. But what I see it as is a, a form of apathy, right? We want to talk about other things, not this. We want to talk about startups. We want to talk about unit tests. We want to talk about uh, UML diagramming. This programmers have uh, trendy topics that will seize possession of the dialogue, and those will consume the resources. Of, or, you know, because a teacher can't, can't make these tools for us. You have to be a programmer hybrid teacher, or you have to be a programmer that's crazy. <clears throat> Another response, every Sony PlayStation 2 sold in my area came with a demo disc that included Yeah Basic, which answers all of the requests made in the article. <laughs> it may very well. It may actually be great. But the, one of the problems, too, is, is that nobody knows about it. So there's a second obstacle here, which is, you may have the perfect tools, but it's been under the radar for so long now, how do we bring it back out so that it's just completely available to a child? You wait for somebody to mail you the disk? I mean, is that the protocol? <laughs> the reason we can't get a real programming language is that there's far too much risk of a buffer overflow in one of the libraries. If there is one, pirates can use it to soft mod the game system. <laughs> Keep in mind that's what killed the Dreamcast. I know, actually it was a BIOS glitch, but being able to pirate games without the risk of modding a console can kill a system. Very good point, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm serious. I'm serious. I don't know. This is, this is huge. Why can't you mod uh, a Nintendo, a Sony? Why can't you mod these systems? Because the war against piracy prevents us from being able to have any, have any hooks into the system. And I mean, the thing is, is if a kid wants to write a DS game or write something simple for his DS, he's got to have a blank cartridge to do it. And I mean, that's illegal. So I mean, so you're, they're, they're kept off of the systems, and that's, that's a predicament. I wish it was different, you know? I mean, I wish the war against piracy didn't trump like, everything else. I, I wish there was some kind of a middle ground. It's practically impossible to teach good programming to students that have had prior exposure to basic. As potential programmers, they are mentally mutilated. <laughs> you guys know who he is? Raise your hands. Yeah, it's Dijkstra, right? 1975. His essay is, uh, how do we tell the truths that might hurt? It's disastrous. These bad programmers. It's disastrous, this bad style. We need beautiful code. We need maintainable code. We, I, these are the topics that, that seize our, our, our entire programming community. And what ways, I mean, it's good for, for if, if you're in your career and you need to write it for your business, but when you're beginning, these are completely irrelevant topics. I mean, beautiful code, spaces, tabs, and whatever. I mean, just enjoy yourself for a little bit. And 
th there are actually some responses to, to the essay that are along the lines of, we don't need more programmers because then my job is at risk. Without thinking that maybe people can just program as a mind-expanding experience. <laughs> Lastly, thank you, thank you for posting this link. Oh, it cuts off at the end, but I'm mentoring a kid in grade nine who was chomping at the bit to learn programming. I thought, okay, let's start him off like when I started in grade nine with basic. To learn quickly, some immediate fee feedback, nothing too complex. Then I started looking and looking, I'd almost given up, thanks. I mean, you can say, I'll get emails that say you're delusional, there's no problem, but you just have to talk to two people, teachers and students. How I found out was just talking to people who were trying to learn and who gave up after giving it the whole college try. So, this is where I'm taking my input from, is from what people are experiencing who, who are in the learning process. How am I doing on time? Wow. I think you're good. Okay. Let me, uh... I just have one last thing to show you. This is completely unrelated. I want to show you a card game I'm working on. So, this is a card game called Caxed. I want you to see if you can see how this is any way relevant. If it's not, all the better. But... <laughs> Here we have a robot with a very pointed face. His name is Kax, he lives in outer space. You're pursuing him with your friends, you're kind of having a, a bit of a race to see who can slaughter this monster first. He spins around from turn to turn and points in the direction of the player that he's about to attack. So let's assume four players here and the card spins in four directions. The die is rolled to see uh, what's going to happen in this next turn. So if it's a one, he fires a red laser. If it's two, he fires a blue laser. If it's three or four, it's a green laser. In the case of a five, um, you choose another player, spin the card, and re-roll. In the case of a six, he directly attacks you, minus five points, um, no choices there. You also have cards representing each of the color of lasers. Red, green, and blue. Okay, so, so far you've seen the cards with the robot's face and the cards with the lasers. Following me? Here is the simplest game board play. Here we have Cax pointing at a player, and the player has a blue laser. Or that might be green, I can't tell. Anyway, if Cax fires a green laser, it, it, it's intercepted by that card. It doesn't hit the player. If, I, if Cax fires a red or a blue laser, then it hits the player. So this acts as a shield. Here's a more complex strategy that a player might use. If the green laser, laser hits, you strike back at Cax with six points. If the red laser hits, you repair yourself for four points. So Cax has, starts out with 50, and each of the players starts out with 50, and as, the, as it goes on, I should probably give the robot more points than everybody else. I don't know, we'll see. But, <laughs> so, there are two strategies. You can either kill all, you have all your opponents destroyed by Cax and be the last man standing, or you can destroy the, the villain himself. Okay. Here's a more complex play again. We've got a blue laser and a green laser. Here we've stacked two repairs, so if a green laser hits, we actually get eight repairs. And then at the end, there's a mirror deflecting anything that fell through. You know what I mean? <laughs> this is where it gets really good. The lasers are actually reusable, right? So you can stick one here. In this case, if a red laser hits, a green laser gets passed to the left, and then it runs through their system. So, you know, whatever they've got, you're basically, you know, converting it over and sending it to the next player. You can spin that card around as you please. I don't know why you do that. <laughs> but I will allow it. <laughs> now, the thing about this, though, is let's say you fire it at a player to the right, and his green laser fires it back to you, a red laser. And then it fires to your red laser, which fires a green laser. Back to his green laser, which fires you, a red laser. Which fires back to him, a green laser, which fires back to you, a red laser. 
and you'll sit there for hours on end watching this happen. <laughs> and there, my friends have learned the crucial point of the game uh, of recursion. <laughs> but the card game does have a stack overflow built into it. <laughs> if you go through, if a uh, laser re-hits you three times, if there's a leak that comes around to you three times, then you suffer complete annihilation. <laughs> your system crashes, you're vulnerable to attack, you can do nothing further. That's the prototype for, for Cax, and I feel like, uh, I don't know, I mean, if you take some limited concepts, it's pretty cool that programming itself is a game. It is. It feels like that. When, you're, when you've got these things coming in and you're, you're messing them around and plugging them into each other, uh, what a wonderful thing. And it's, there's strategy to it, and just by nature it's a game. We just have to add some drawings. <laughs> well, it's been a privilege to be with you today, and I'll certainly field questions. <laughs> <laughs>